I'm Samer, I'm 22, I'm from Syria. Syria was a heaven, but because of the war and the difficult situation, I found myself as a refugee in Europe. And through this documentary film, I would like to explain about our life as refugees in Europe. In over a year and a half, the government did not expand the capacities for refugees by promoting security discourse. They are creating the environment of fear in which no local community wants to host asylum homes anymore. During the waiting period, refugees are facing difficult living situations. We are forced to live in asylum centers with strict rules bad food, racist treatment by some of the asylum center's employees, the social workers and the security staff and the administrative employees, and without any medical or psychological assistance, with only first aid provided and no doctors. I would like to tell you about my country, which a lot of people didn't know about before we got to be here in Slovenia. I don't want to give up a lot. It's difficult, it's difficult to give up. Life. حياة كاملة جميلة بكل معنى الكلمة للأسف خسرناها نتمنى ترجع بس خسرناها حياة في قمة الجمال كل شيء ممكن كل شيء بتتمناه بحياتك كان ممكن تلاقيه هناك هلا ما ضل شيء It was a really beautiful country and all the Syrian people were loving this country and that in the morning all the people were drinking coffee and listening to Fairuz and there was, in Damascus especially, the smell of jasmine everywhere. That's what I know of Syria. وحاليا يعني الوضع فيه سيء جدا يعني حلب يعني مأهور من جوات قلبي على حلب يعني لا فيه حاليا لا فيه لا كير لا ماي لا كهرباء وبالنسبة للأطفال يعني هلا الطفل إذا ما تعلم من زغروا على الكتابة والقراية بكبروا كيف بده يتعلم والله يساعد العالم اللي ما عم تشتغل it was part of a French mandate before the um, Second World War and before that as uh, Al-Sham, uh, Great Syria, it was part of Ottoman Empire for a long time. Um, uh, then after the Second World War, the French gave it a kind of independence, which was uh, actually came to power in 46. Syria, Halab. Halab, Ahdas in Syria, Abel Mashakil, Abel Hada, Kenneth Asab, Syria, Lakhti Saudi. Taban, Hada, she saw Sar Alina, Yani, saw it, Ahdas, saw it, Mashakil. In Haramna, in Haramna, and Kilwat, and the Movis in Halab. As Mal Asaf, Yani, Xerna Kir, Xert as the Kai, Xert. ناسي خسرت رفقاتي خسرت أهلي يعني وهلا أنا هون لوحدي بسلوفينيا يعني بعيد عن أهلي بعيد عن ناسي طبعا هي هي ظروف الحرب يعني اللي 
بعدتنا عن كثير ناس بنحبهم It's also one of the most uh, secular and uh, from the western perspective most developed uh, countries of the arab speaking world uh, maybe also due to the regime of uh, one family in power which in a way um, from the beginning which was uh, i think a military over uh, turning uh, the governance uh, then as i know the history it slowly uh, became more and more liberal to a certain extent before the war syria it was really really a great a great country like uh, It was so nice, beautiful. People loved it, loved each other. Uh, like we had, we had a lot of friends, and uh, like I, well, of course, my family is staying in Damascus at the moment, so I, I really miss my family. Syria is a product of uh, Sykes-Picot Agreement, so it's a completely Western uh, stuff, and you have some progressive forces now trying to draw new. Like Kurds and uh, Daesh, and you have some reactionary forces trying to still stay in this Western framework as it was done 100 years ago. Hayati Kanat Suriya Alam Kanat Hayat Halwa Ktir Yan Kit Ali Arba Arafat Anna Raba Vilat Ali Ali Kenna Ali Aratul Mitli Lakhwa Kenna. نشتري نفس اللباس ناكل نفس الاكل نطلع سوا نجي سوا because of where it lies and because of how religiously it was affiliated so it's in a way a buffer zone between Saudi Arabia Israel which has its connection in Lebanon Turkey Iraq and so on so it's a, it's no surprise that what is happening is happening exactly where it is happening. يعني الذكريات اللي كنت اتذكرها قبل ذكريات طفولة بس مع الأسف هلا يعني ما ضل ذكريات، الذكريات اللي بتذكرها كلها دم وقصف ودمار وخراب هيك يعني ما بحب اتذكر شيء من حلب، ما بحب اتذكر على أحرى شيء من سوريا كلها. Yeah, that is my country, and we all hope to get our country back and go to live there again. Syria, Syria, the Jamal, the Anafa, the love, the joy, the beautiful, the knowledge, the culture. Of course, the whole world, and we have a big culture. Sorry, we have a culture, but if people are interested in the culture, we have reached our goal. What do you want to say? A whole country. مفقودة كانت على وجه الأرض ما كانت موجودة غير بسوريا ببساطة حضارة كاملة نادرة هاي سوريا سوريا is also a place of a great ethnical and religious diversity so you have different 
groups, different minorities living there. Um, and for the last five years, uh, with the extraordinary help of the Western countries, uh, there is a civil war in Syria which is uh, dismantling the country on the same way as we already saw it, uh, for example, in Lebanon in the 70s, in Yugoslavia in the 90s, in Iraq um, since 2003. Syria, a new European collective uh, memory or like knowledge doesn't exist. Uh, you don't hear about it in schools, you don't hear about it, you didn't hear about it in media uh, until the war started. And the war has been there for so many years that now everything is almost destroyed, that a lot of people are fleeing if they can, uh, most of them to Europe of course, because people believe that Europe will be a good place to start over again a new life or just to wait to come back home. But at the end they don't find what they were looking for because everyone here in Europe is, is scared. Before I made friends with Syrians, uh, I, didn't know, I didn't, didn't know a lot. Um, afterwards I informed myself more about it. Um, I tried to inform myself about the war, of course, um, about what is going on. Um, yeah, uh, but also about, uh, uh, about Syria before, like I think uh, uh, Sama and Rafa showed, showed, showed us a lot of things, especially about how uh, Damascus, uh, the life in Damascus has been, has been before. Um, I learned that it was uh, one, of the, one of the most uh, successful countries in the, in the region in economic terms. As we like to call it on Levant, uh, on the eastern part of Mediterranean Sea, trapped between uh, Turkey on the north, Iraq on the east, uh, Lebanon on the on the western side, Israel, yeah, and then Jordan. Jordan, yeah, of course. What I heard after it was amazing country. When I speak with the people now, I know, let's say, a lot of people from Syria, and when we speak, how they lived before the war. It was like, it looked like me somehow like promised countries, but uh, we have a, let's say, similar story about Yugoslavia. <laughs> and in late 60s, uh, the high ranking generals of the Ba'ath party took over the government, so it became a military dictatorship. Um, Syria is also known that it was uh, in the longest modern state of war with the neighboring country, this is with Israel, and that it also had the longest um, emergency state declared. I think it's since 60s and all the way till 2011. I don't know what to say, but I think they, they think that we, we came from our country, we were, we were on the street, we were sleeping on the street. They didn't know that we had our life, we, were, we had perfect life. But we have problems, that's why we left our country, we have war. للأسف الشديد يعني صار معنا هالأزمة وهالوضع هذا وحسبي الله أنا بالوكيل يعني لا أنا ولا حي الله واحد سوري ما كان يتمنى هذا الشيء بيصير بسوريا يعني مثل هالله الدماء اللي نتل أبو اللي نتلت أمه اللي راح أخوه اللي راحت أخته يعني ما في ولا عين سورية هالله ما نكبت ما راح منا أولاد ما راحت منا أم ما راحت منا حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل بس. Sad country right now and I think the war that is going on is just too long and too many people died, too many innocent people died and uh, I think nor the European Union or the other countries uh, did their job. Yeah, we are from that country, which they were speaking about. And if we are protesting, that doesn't mean that we are a security threat. We are protesting to say what are the difficulties that we are facing 
and our situation is hard and we are human beings like you like everyone اخذوني من قلب الفرشه انا وقاعد بقلب بيتي بنام سوا they took him from his bed he was lying on the mattress دون اي انذار then they took him to send him back to Slovenia without warning ودون اي قرار محكمي and they did not give him any decision from the court هذه هي انسانيته هذه انسانيه الغرب الذي تامر على الشعب السوري وقتل شبابه وقتل الاطفال وشرد النساء Almost half of the population in Syria. ودمر البيوت. They destroyed the. ودمر البنية التحتية. And the economy and everything in Syria. ماذا يريدون بقى من سالك من سوريا؟ What else they want? دعونا نعيش ونعود إلى بلادنا فلا نريد بلادكم كلها. Just let us leave and leave our country, then we will go back to our country to live there. Refugees in general have been like uh, a big part of like uh, the Slovenian public space for a, a long time. I mean, like uh, the first big influx of, uh, of refugees came uh, right after like Slovenian independence, so from the Balkan Wars. So um, refugees from Bosnia, Serbia, and other places are like. Uh, a big part of Slovenian society and a big part of like major influence I think on, uh, on Slovenian culture and politics. Uh, refugees are just a really small percentage compared to all the other people that are coming to Italy. So for refugees you have a sort of path, you know what to do, the government know what to do, so they go into this procedure, they have to be recognized and then they are given the refugee status, but this can take really, really a long time and at a certain point everyone is mixed, they are all in the same center and they have to distinguish between who can apply for the refugee status and who can't. And this can take really a long time. And of course, all the people arrive in south of Italy, but they have to be split in all the country and there are some regions where they are well accepted and other regions where they are not. In Germany, um uh, the state is really in control of all uh, of all the of all the migration and uh, of all the refugees. They are they are treated in a better way, even though often not in a good way. I mean, uh, maybe maybe the you know about this all these uh, arson arson attacks on the refugee uh, centers, like they, they the refugees are being attacked a lot in Germany. Um, but in general, the um, uh, the situation, I, I would say, is better, but it's also more controlled. With the arrival of the refugees in Slovenia and also with the just passing by Slovenia, I think we, we have realized that um, though we consider ourselves as the greatest civilization that ever existed in, in the world, uh, we cannot actually take care of a few hundred, few thousand, few hundred thousand people. And, uh, what we're facing and seeing now is um, the 
deconstruction of the state, considering one uh, small, in Slovenia one very small community. Um, but I think this is kind of a, that in that, in that sense refugees uh, in Europe are already an avant-garde. When you are like watching the media, following the media, you will have a sense that we are talking about hundreds of thousands of people who are here. Actually, we have to admit that we have a problem to accept like 400 people <laughs> or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed with, let's say, with reaction of, of, of European Union. People are scared and uh, they, they are scared maybe not about terrorism or something. They are scared just because they connect foreign people with crime or with something bad. They think that Italians are better, let's say. Italians are more reliable and loyal, but it's not like that because Italian people make a lot of shit as well. People who come from Syria, they're escaping war uh, and they are refugees in, in the legal sense, if anyone is. So uh, Slovenia has clear uh, international obligations uh, in based in humanitarian law and then uh, in the Geneva Convention status of refugees which we signed so <coughs> I think we should accommodate as many as possible and I think we haven't reached that uh, that point yet now when people finally came in uh, like at least crossed in bigger numbers it's uh, really great that finally people from other places like Middle East uh, realize that there is also Slovenia where they can stay uh, despite not so many people are fortunately decided for this, we would, I mean me personally and our community here in Rome would prefer that more people would like to stay in Slovenia uh, because it's really too much mono-ethnic, despite the refugees from Bosnia, it's too mono-ethnic country and it's very um, boring to live here without other people. So it's uh, great that uh, people from uh, other places uh, uh, finally decide to stay here. I'm not sure, should I say that I was surprised or, or with reaction of Europe after, after everything is happened because uh, somehow Europe and whole West and East world is totally involved in, in conflict of Syria and they have their own responsibility for everything what happens and then I was surprised why reaction was so, let's say, negative. Unfortunately, this country is uh, more and more, is very xenophobic at the first place, very, um, uh, yeah, very narrow-minded uh, and politicians and media are spreading this uh, uh, fear and security approach, which is extremely bad for uh, everybody living here, not just for refugees, but many people don't realize that. I would like to say that we are normal people, not only protesting, but we also play. Read. Sing. Walk, work, translate, use airplanes, use computers, dance, film, study, meet with people, and also we have our nice and peaceful part of our personality which nobody sees. We have also some messages for you guys. As well as most of Slovenians, also most of the refugees who came here, who are now living here, they actually don't want to be in Slovenia or they don't want to stay in Slovenia. So uh, it's a strange coincidence that we found ourselves together in this country and um, we need to work it that it will be the best for all of us together. 
uh, but uh, definitely people needs to needs to be needs to realize the situation that uh, it it it's not long ago when people were also running from Slovenia from different kind of reason that the exodus it's a big part of our culture and recent history actually uh, and that this is just uh, unfortunately it's a normal thing that is happening and that uh, people need to start to, to live with it. نتمنى تتفهمون هذا الوضع إنه إحنا جايين نعيش بأمان بلدنا حب بعد ما نقدر نعيش بيه وجينا نعيش هنا وضعنا صعب. What has happened to them one day can happen also to us because nobody in Syria for example was expecting the war and that's now maybe tomorrow I will go to the university and then my lesson but maybe in one week I won't be able to do that. We will never know what it would happen and I think that we will be really happy to have someone helping us. So just if we just have to help these people thinking that maybe one day we would need need the same kind of help as them. سوريا يعني ماني إنه غص مثلاً جاي بغير جنسية وعقول إني سوري وأنا مسوري ومن حلب يعني بالذات من حلب وهلا الكل بيعرف شو أوضاع حلب وسوريا و... وبتمنى إنه نحن مانا يعني مانا إرهاب نحن. We are all afraid of the unknown, but the moment that we get out of our comfort zone, we can learn something and through learning it comes acceptance not only of your own fears but of the difference that exists between us as human beings as people they have their own problems and of course they do not deal with them their own problems so they think that the only thing that is um, that is causing their problems are the refugees which is of course totally untrue and unfair so uh, I think that um, if they get to know refugees and they will uh, welcome them as uh, normal uh, neighbors they would see that most of them are common people just seeking to be true. <laughs> بالعكس سواء جنهم يعني رسالة بالعكس اللاجئين زينين يعني وهم نهجموا من الحرب ومن القتل ومن الذبح ومن التفجير ومن هاي الأمور وما يعرفون هاي الأمور كل الزين تم على إيش كانوا فلذلك يعني إحنا هنا يعني طالبين حماية يعني شلون إحنا نروح نسوي ليش الله تبيش أمه إحنا ننزل من بلدنا من هاي الأمور. And when you sit down and you hear the when you hear the the stories of people like you will you will be really sad. You will be really sad when you hear it. Like they, they just came, you know, to have a life because, because everything got destroyed in Syria. They just came here to have, to have a life, uh, to to raise the children, to to be with the family, you know, like to to just have normal life like everybody. I don't want to say uh, all refugees are nice and good people. Refugees are just people like everybody else. Uh, there are more nice people, there are less nice people, but what I have to say is that uh, regarding the really, the really tough situation and the, 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 the horrible stories like people uh, have, um, I was astonished how, how nice and helpful and uh, most of the people were I met. Meet the people and just try to go as much or like a little bit out of your comfort zone to the extent that you not only listen but you hear so when you start hearing not only listening then i think you you win wa batmanna min al-shaab al-slovini taban yani taqabbalna mujtama'un hada natmanna lahum kal khair inshallah